Believe it or not, this wasn't always called an avocado. It had a lot of names. For a while, Americans called this popular fruit an alligator pear. Yeah, I, I guess I see it. But that name didn't exactly make people want to eat it. In 1915, the Krupp's first growers association decided to do some serious rebranding. They renamed it the Avocado. And the association declared that anyone, quote, using the barbarism alligator pair should forthwith be fined 500 ducats to be paid in the coin of the realm. Long-winded way of saying they really hated the name alligator pair. And there's some question as to whether the avocado would have ever become the avocado that we know and love if we had always known it as the alligator pear. As we know, words matter, especially when it comes to what we eat. In fact, words are so powerful, they can reshape entire ecosystems. The classic story is really the Patagonian toothfish, which sounds like something really bony and awful, but when the fishermen rebranded this as Chilean sea bass. It sounded like something that you'd, you'd want to order at a white table restaurant. And that name change worked. Demand for the fish exploded. But the succulent sounding name led to overfishing and created a major black market. Hundreds of high profile chefs called for boycotts. If you can rebrand something so successfully as to cause environmental catastrophe, maybe that can also work in reverse. Eating less meat is a key way to feed the world without wrecking the climate. So could a little bit of marketing help make that happen? Earlier this year, the World Resources Institute came out with a guide for marketing food. Here's what doesn't work, focusing on what the food isn't. The guide says the real recipe for success is to emphasize a dish's flavor, origin, or how it's prepared. So instead of saying the vegetarian meat-free option, say this is the, the mash from, uh, well, let's not use mash, let's say <laughs> uh, the citrus glazed sweet potatoes with hot spices. Take one study from a team at Stanford. They had the university dining hall switch out the names of dishes on certain days. And they kept track of how much food they sold under each name. First, the basic name bok choy and mushrooms. Then health focused names. Low sodium bok choy and mushrooms, which is just, I, I would never, that would not be the thing that screamed at me from the menu to like, yes, this is what I want. Finally, the indulgent name. Tangy ginger bok choy and bonsai shiitake mushrooms. It's like, oh yeah. For the eight meals they tested, the indulgent name sold 33% more than the restrictive, healthy sounding name. Now, it is important to take these individual studies with a grain of salt. But on a gut level, those lessons match up to what we know from the bigger marketing world. It's not really saying anything new that the folks said, say, Mazda marketing didn't know 50 years ago. Modern agriculture has never been great for the environment. But the pressures of feeding a growing world and avoiding climate change have raised the stakes. If language can get people to eat less meat, sorry, eat more citrus glazed carrots, that could be a pretty good place to start. So I found the original minutes from the Growers Association meeting. I'm just gonna read a few highlights. The superb fruit gets in the wrong with many who would otherwise be its friend when instead of a name suggesting it's coming down from a celestial direction, from one of the truly great trees of the earth, as does the benign avocado, the other hyphenated name is suggested of the crawling and sprawling on the ground of one of the three ugliest, biggest mouthed animals of creation, the hippopotamus, rhinoceros, and crocodile. This stuff is so weird. <laughs> <laughs>